There are two main actions when clipping on lead. Clipping the quick draw to the climbing bolt with the straight gate side of the quick draw. Clipping the rope to the other end of the quick draw, that is the side with the bent gate or wire carabiner. Simple enough, but let's look at this two part move in more detail and consider additional items. Let's discuss a couple of clipping styles. First, pinch the rope between your thumb and your pointer finger. Then place your middle finger in the basket of the bent gate carabiner to stabilize it. Then add pressure and making a downward movement with the middle finger while rolling the pinch rope through the gate and into the carabiner. A second style is to hang the rope in the notch between your thumb and the rest of your hand. Then grasp the spine side of the carabiner with your remaining four fingers. Start to make a fist while using your thumb to push the rope into the carabiner. Then pinch the rope between the pointer and middle finger, push your thumb against the spine of the carabiner, and push the rope into the carabiner. Practice makes perfect. Practice clipping while at home, while driving, while eating, sleeping, or even when sitting in the bathroom. Clipping should become second nature. Practice with both the left and the right hands, and also with the gates facing both left and right. This gives you four different clipping positions. Try grasping and clipping the rope with the techniques mentioned and find what works and is most comfortable for you. You want to be as efficient as possible when clipping. There are several factors involved in clipping efficiency in order to minimize the energy exerted and the potential risk. In traditional climbing and ice climbing, leaders often try to clip between waist and chest level. However, with sport climbing, Clipping at your waist is not always the safest or most efficient move. Sometimes you clip as early as possible. The bolt might even be above your head. Trying to clip a bolt way above your head could increase the distance you might fall. Here's a scary scenario. You're scared and pumped. You then decide to try clipping the draw that is barely within reach above your head. You decide to pull up a whole arm load of rope, but it's not enough. So then, you bite that length of rope in your teeth and you pull up yet another arm load of rope. However, you struggle to make the clip and fall much further than you had to because of the huge amount of rope out. That could get really dangerous. Try to never blow the clip, meaning falling while clipping, especially with tons of rope out. Clipping at your waist level or chest level avoids unneeded slack in the system. It also conserves energy by not pulling up tons of rope you might have the strength reserve needed to hold on to the key crimp at the next crux. Your clipping stance is a key concept. Many sport routes have natural clipping stances or rests from which to clip. Most bolted routes that were established ground up have stances where the first ascensionist climber drilled in the bolt. This offers all future climbers the stance to clip from. Seek out these stances and try to find the balanced and relaxed place where you can clip the bolt. Depending on the route's grade, you should know if a clipping move feels too difficult. If it does feel incredibly hard, chances are that it is the incorrect clipping stance. From a safety perspective, preferably clip the draw so that as you eventually climb above it, the rope runs over the spine of the carabiner and not the gate. This reduces the chance of the rope rubbing against the gate and in the event of a fall, accidentally becoming unclipped. An example would be, if you were to climb up and right past a bolt, ideally the gates of the quick draw carabiners face to the left, which is away from the leader. 